Hey everybody, I'm Jason Benton. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how you can install inset doors on frameless cabinets uh, more specifically, exactly how you go about installing the hinges. I've done a previous video on how to install hinges on, say, a face frame application. So if you want to check that out, I'll go ahead and leave a link up in the corner now. But before we get into it, I want to bring you in close and just kind of show you exactly what it is that we're going to be doing. Okay, so when we're talking about a frameless cabinet, what we're referring to is that the sides is just a, the thickness of whatever material you're using, right? There is no face frame there. And then with an inset door, the door is actually inset, this being the door, this being the side of the cabinet, the door is inset into the cabinet. Okay, so it's not overhang. There's different terminology, you know, half overlay, full overlay, partial overlay, three quarter inch overlay, all of these different things, right? These are inset. And what this is, is just, it's actually similar to if you were to go to like a Rockler or Woodcraft and you're actually looking at the hinges, they're just little samples. And I like to keep these samples here because they show me not only what it's gonna look like, but how the door reacts itself. And then I'm able to take notes on it for if I ever use it in the future. So this is an inset three quarter inch material. So these inset hinges are very specific to the thickness of the material for the door. And this is just three quarter inch ply, which you know is a little bit under three quarters of an inch because it's actually millimeters. But if you look, it's perfectly flush, right? So this is what we're looking for. This is what we want. So now looking at the hinge itself. So the hinge is actually two parts. If I was to take this off right here, you have a hinge plate, which is this right here, and you have a hinge which is this right here. This clips in to the plate, just like that. And then that completes the hinge. So it makes it very easy to take the door off. So let's go ahead and take it off so we can talk about each one individually. So the biggest thing when it comes to inset doors using this style of hinge is how far back the hinge plate is installed, right? So what you have to consider is the thickness of the door so if this was overlay, this hinge plate would actually be further up, is basically what I'm trying to say. But since this is inset, this has to be back further. Now, how do you figure that out? Well, the manufacturer has instructions on exactly how far that needs to be back. Or you can go one further and you can get a jig like this, which is very inexpensive, or you can just make your own once you know the measurements. But I'll be using this in the video, and I have these for different hinge locations, depending on the application that I'm trying to do, just because they're very easy to use and they're very quick. And I'll go ahead and bring this in close so you guys can see it. So this is a template for three quarter inch thick material. The holes are spaced 32 millimeters apart, which is a standard. And then the offset, so from the edge of the door is 56 millimeters, right? And then this right here is just a center line. And then this is how you reference the front of your door. And you'll get to see all this in action uh, here in just a second once I use it. Now you absolutely do not need something like this. This just makes it a lot easier uh, and this will last a very long time. And so now that we've talked about the hinge plate, let's talk about the actual uh, hinge itself. So really the only thing that you need to know about these hinges, and you're gonna see me go through the entire process, is you're gonna hear something referred to as the tab or the setback or the gap or the spacing, what they're referring to, I'm gonna bring you in close. What that's referring to is the distance from the edge of the door to the edge of the hinge. These hinges call for a five millimeter tab. Hinges are different, but most of the time when you're using hinges like this, I found five millimeters to pretty much be the standard. Now that's very important because if you don't do the proper tab or setback or whatever you wanna call it, your door's not gonna fit properly. So how can we go about ensuring that we are accurate all the time? That's where something like this comes in very handy. And this is very similar to the other jig and it's basically just a setup block. And this is mine that I use for five millimeter and you'll get to see this in action once I go over to the drill press to drill my hole. But this just ensures that when I set up my fence and everything else, I'm in the same location. And you can make these out of anything. This is just some uh, hard plastic. You could make these out of plywood. You can make them out of whatever you want. So now let's go ahead and get into actually going through the process for the doors. Okay, so now I'm gonna walk you through the process that I go, I haven't even cut the doors or anything. So I'm gonna do all of that right now. And I'm gonna kind of go from start to finish on how I would go about doing this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure my opening, the width. And the width of my opening 
is 622 millimeters or 24 and a half inches for those of you that must have Imperial, right? So do whichever one you want. I find especially when working with hardware like slides and uh, hinges and everything else, it is much easier for me uh, to do it in metric simply because pretty much everything is made uh, under metric measurements. Once I have that measurement, right, I want to start thinking and taking into consideration the gaps that I want, right? So the, the different reveals that I want. I like a two millimeter reveal, uh, you know, which is roughly, it's just under an eighth of an inch, okay? So if I like a two millimeter reveal, if I'm gonna take my number, and it's actually 620, yeah, 622. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract two for this side and two for this side, and then I wanna take two for the center. I don't want two on each piece, I just want two for the center, because I'm gonna break this up into two doors. So 622 minus two is 620, minus two is 618, and minus two for the center is 616. So now I can take 616 and I can divide that by two. 616 divided by two is 308. So I know that each one of my doors, the width needs to be 308 millimeters. And obviously the next measurement that I'm gonna do is the overall height. And the overall height of this opening is 746 or an Imperial, we've got uh, 29 and 3 eighths. So 746, and here I only wanna subtract two millimeters from the top, two millimeters from the bottom. So I'm only gonna, I'm gonna subtract four from the overall height, which would be 746 minus four is 742. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go cut my pieces and then I'll come back and we'll go through the installation process. And I'm not gonna show you how to cut the pieces. I'm sure that if you're watching this video, you know how to cut wood or you have tools that can do it. So let me go cut those and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got my doors cut. Uh, I've got them in place just to ensure that all my measurements were right and everything uh, works good. Right now I've got about a four millimeter gap in the middle, but that's because they're all the way uh, tight against the sides. So the next thing that we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and drill out the hinge locations on the doors and we're also gonna go ahead and attach the plates for the hinges themselves inside of the cabinet. So let me walk you through how we go about doing that. So remember before I was talking about uh, that you wanna have a two millimeter reveal all the way around. So to make this easy, we're gonna install our hinges 100 millimeters down, which is about the equivalent to four inches, which is fine for these doors. So we're gonna go 100 millimeters down and that's where we're gonna mark our plates. Now on the doors, on the hinge locations, because I want two millimeters up top and two millimeters down below, we need to subtract two millimeters from those. So I'm gonna mark a line at 98 millimeters here, and then down at the bottom, from the bottom up, 98 millimeters, and that is gonna make sure that we are aligned with everything when we go to hook these back up. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I brought you in real close, and I've actually added some light because the lighting is kind of bad in here now. So before I said, for the cabinets themselves, we're gonna come down 100 millimeters or four inches or three inches or whatever you wanna use, right? So my 100 millimeter mark is right there. So I'm gonna mark that here on the top and then I'm also gonna mark it down on the bottom. Once I've done that, I'm then going to extend that line. And the reason I'm extending that line is because the little template that I'm using has a guideline on it and that will help me get everything lined up. And since I have you in close now, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and go through the process uh, of getting the plates mounted now. So as you can see, I've got my line that I marked and then I've got the indicator line here. And I'm using the front of my cabinet as the reference. That's where this blue block comes into play. So I'm gonna go ahead and line these up. Okay, everything's good. I'm lined up where I need to be. I like to take a clamp uh, just something like this quick little trigger clamp here and just make sure everything stays where it's supposed to stay. And then from here, I'm gonna use a self-centering drill bit. And the self-centering drill bit is great because it makes the installation a lot better. So I'm just gonna push this right here. Drill my first hole. Drill my second hole. I can go ahead and release the clamp. I can now go ahead and take my hinge plate and on the hinge plate, there's an arrow 
that points forward and that arrow is right here. So if you ever get confused, just look at the hinge plate. Typically they're gonna have that on there. And so the great thing about these self-centering drill bits is that you're guaranteed you're gonna be center. So I don't like to tighten the first one all the way tight. I like to have a little bit of play. And then I'm gonna take that second one and I'm gonna ensure that I screw it in nice and tight. And once I do that, I know I can tighten down the other one and my hinge plate is installed. And you just do that to the top and bottom. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and mark up our doors. And I'm just gonna show you real quick. So I said before we were gonna do 100 just to make it easy. So we need to subtract two from that to account for the reveal that we want. And so this is really simple. All we have to do here is just, we can kind of use this straight edge and just make a line just like this. And then that line is our indicator of where we need to put the center of the drill bit once we go over to the drill press to drill out the cup. So I'll do this to the bottom and the top, and then we'll go over to the drill press. All right, so real quickly, I already have this set, but I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this up and show you uh, just so you can see what I was talking about and what the benefit to this is. So what I like to do is actually get that bit down into this. And again, remember, this is a five millimeter tab. So now it's in there, right? So now I can bring my fence forward and once I have my fence set up and I know that I'm using that five millimeter tab and it's good and that that's now my reference, I can then lock this down, lock this down and then I can raise that up and I can go ahead and pull that out and drill my holes and I know that I'm gonna have that nice five millimeter tab that I need. Now before I mentioned that that line is just an indicator of where the center of my bit needs to go. So I'm on there now. I can go ahead and drill my hole. Now I've got that drilled out. You can go ahead and set your depth to whatever you need to do. I kind of like to just give it a feel. I've drilled enough of them now to kind of have a good idea of where I need to stop. So usually what I'll do is I'll stop what I think might be a little bit short. Uh, and then I'll just go ahead and finish it off if I need to. But let's go ahead and check the fit. So that is maybe just ever so slightly deeper. So let's go ahead and do that now. And that now should be just right. Yep, good to go. So I can go ahead and drill my other hole and then we'll go ahead and get this door installed. So of course, as I was going through this, it didn't film anything. So you can see I already have my holes pre-drilled. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk through the steps again. I like to put the hinge in the door and then you just use something like this Pelini pocket rule. I, I use this for everything. You're just, it's something to reference the edge to ensure that everything is nice and straight. Once you have that set, you can then use your uh, self-centering drill bit to go ahead and drill both of those holes. Once that's done, then just like the plates, I like to insert one not quite all the way tight, and then that way this one will go ahead and center. Once I do that, I then go ahead and tighten the other one down, and I do that on both sides. All right, so now the moment of truth, okay? <laughs> Let's make sure that everything worked out the way that I had explained it and that I had hoped for. So we're gonna go ahead and align the front edge up just like that on both, and then just lock it in place, lock it in place, and looking at it right now, everything looks really, really good. Close it and we're good to go. A nice, perfectly flush door. And then there's adjustments on it, obviously, but this actually looks pretty much perfect. I might be able to raise it up just a little bit, but I mean, everything came out really, really, really nice. Uh, and that's exactly what you want if you're doing inset doors. And so one last thing that I do wanna mention before I close this video out is because these are inset doors, there has to be something to stop the door from moving. And there's a lot of things you can do. This is just shop furniture. This is the uh, new miter saw that I'm building, which there will be a YouTube video on this coming out uh, in the near future. But you have to have something to stop that, just like that, you see? You wanna make sure that something stops that door. So this is just an option, uh, and it's pretty much you know perfect for this application. Uh, I probably wouldn't do this on an internal door, but it works very well for this just a couple of scrap blocks. And then the only thing you gotta make sure of is that you use the same thickness as your door material, and that's what you can use as a spacer when you attach those. So because I did that, 
everything came out nice and flush. It just looks really, really, really good. Okay guys, so that's how you go about installing inset doors on frameless cabinets. And there's a million different videos that I could make on the different types of hinges, but I thought this would be helpful since it is actually a project that I'm working on right now. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Or if you're not following me over on Instagram, head over there at Bents Woodworking and you guys can send me DMs there uh, whenever you'd like and I will highly likely get back to you uh, in a very quick manner. That's gonna do it for this video. I really appreciate all of you watching as usual. And until next time, get out in the shop, try something new, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.